The election may be over, but the clock is ticking on an issue affecting every American family. And standing at the urgent crossroads, the president and the Speaker of the House, Republican John Boehner. There is a freight train bearing down on this country called the fiscal cliff. It made the stock market so nervous today for the second day in a row, it dropped. And business leaders have begun to come forward to warn the government there will be serious economic consequences if there's no deal. At issue, the fiscal cliff, a doomsday law that hikes taxes and unleashes a wrecking ball of cuts by January 1st. So I started by asking Speaker Boehner if this time he and the now re-elected president that makes it are going to make a deal. My goal here is to come to the what was the first word you said to yourself when you knew that the president was going to win again? It's the hand I was dealt. I'll play it. As and I went to bed. Right away? How early? 15. I saw the handwriting on the wall for a couple of hours. And uh, at 11.15, the race was, in my view, finished. I went to sleep and slept like a baby. The fiscal cliff is looming. The president has said, do it now. Let us get a deal. Let us in this gridlock now. Is it going to happen? I remain optimistic that we're going to be able to find common ground uh, to avoid uh, this fiscal cliff and find a way uh, to work together. But by when? By January 1st? I would hope so. I don't... The president is talking about specific increases. He campaigned on specific increases in tax rates from 35% to 39% for those making more than $250,000. So is that on the table right now? Raising taxes on small business people uh, is the wrong prescription given where our economy is. Is it on the table to talk about? It I made clear the wealthier Americans yesterday pitch in here. that raising tax rates uh, is unacceptable. And frankly, it couldn't even pass the House. Putting increased revenues on the table, uh, but through reforming our tax code. And I would do that if the president were serious about solving our spending problem and um, trying to secure uh, our entitlement programs. The president and I had very good conversations. Uh, I'm confident that he and I uh, can find the common ground necessary. So you as well. will talk about it, even if you believe it's the wrong approach, you'll talk about it. Of course we'll talk, talk about it. We, we've talked about all kinds of things we may disagree with. I, I'm, I'm the most reasonable, responsible person here in Washington. The president knows this. He knows that he and I can work together. Uh, the election's over. Now it's time to get to work. And the speaker seemed confident that after this election, Tea Party members will be supportive of getting work done. So I asked, will he still repeal Obamacare? You had said next year that you would repeal the health care vote. That's still your mission? Well, I think the election changes that. It's pretty clear that the president was reelected. Obamacare uh, is the law of the land. But you won't be spending the time next year trying to repeal Obamacare? Uh, there certainly may be parts of it that we believe uh, need to be changed. Uh, we may do that. No decisions at this point. And another question about a firebrand in his party, the man who ran for vice president, still Congressman Paul Ryan. Congressman Paul Ryan, is he the leader of the Republican Party now? Oh, I wouldn't think so. Paul Ryan's a policy wonk. Uh, he's, he's involved in the cause of trying to bring us pro-growth economic agenda to America and uh, making sure that we're doing this in a fiscally responsible way. There have been a lot of Republican comments since Rush Limbaugh said... I went to bed last night thinking we've lost the country. We've lost the country. We're outnumbered. Al Cardenas has said that the party has gotten, this, these are his words, too old, too white, too male. Is that right? Well, I think uh, what Republicans need to learn is how do we speak to all Americans? You know, not just the people who look like us and act like us, but how do we speak to all Americans? The powerful Speaker of the House of Representatives, John Boehner, that was just today, and I'm here now with Jonathan Carl, who's covered the campaign, covers Congress for us. What did you hear, John? Well, he said raising tax rates is unacceptable, and let me tell you that there is an entirely different view of that 
on the other side of the aisle and at the White House. If the president campaigned on one thing, it was raising tax rates on the wealthy. They say any deal that doesn't do that is unacceptable. So what happens next now? I seem to hear the speaker saying, you know, we can talk. Well, uh, you did. And, and, you know, he also wanted to reassure everybody, including the markets, that a deal will be done. We're not going to get to the brink. We're not going to get to the point where the credit rating of the country is again at risk. He said he's willing to talk about anything. And, Diane, he called himself the most reasonable man in Washington. Uh, so I, I think that he is determined to get something done.